The MMA Discussion Podcast is brought to you by SportsOfAnarchy.com. Visit our site for all your sporting news and needs. We're also brought to you by SubmissionFC.com. Enter the promo code SportsOfAnarchy10 for 10% off the best Brazilian jiu-jitsu gear. Listen, it is the summer. There are tournaments going on. You want to get some gear that is the bomb going SubmissionFC.com. Get it done. 10% off? Come on. That's a good deal. Get it. We're also brought to you by the Flex Belt. Summer's approaching fast. You want to strengthen and tone those abs. The Flex Belt, which is FDA cleared, might just be for you. All right. Follow the link in the description below. Get your very own. And we are now available to listen to on iTunes, the Radio Podcast app, Stitcher, and of course, now SoundCloud, one of our new, what would you call that, Chris? One of our new uh, outlets of getting the podcast out there. We want to thank SoundCloud yeah. for letting us. Uh, set up shop, I guess you could say, and um, again, all available for free on all smartphone devices. So get it in, people. 35th episode of the MMA Discussion Podcast. I'm joined by, of course, my co host Chris. Say what's up. What's up, guys? How's everything going? And the man with the plan, JP Jonas. What's up, man? Hey, what's happening? Oh, all right. So, what a weekend. Fun yeah, weekend. So, oh, yeah. yeah. The event lived up to the hype, for sure. It was great. UFC on Fox 15, uh, Rockwell vs. Machida. That was a great car all from top to bottom. I didn't – there were there were very, very few boring moments in uh, in the night. I can't even think of one. Um, yeah, I have no complaints. Yeah, it was a great fight. Uh, I want to give uh, – you know, starting from the bottom all the way to the top, you know, and uh, the, the most impress- impressive performance on the prelims that were on the fight pass, uh, I got to say, was Team Means. That amazing uh, arm triangle choke he got in the third round against George Sullivan. Very competitive fight up till then. He utilized great striking, of course. Uh, he seems to be starting to understand how to use that reach of his um, wisely. Um, was able to get it to the ground and, uh, you know, didn't mess around. So congratulations to Tim Means. That card all overall, though, the televised prelims were uh, fantastic. And I like that the prelims were on Fox. You know, I didn't think that I would, but um, they had them on Fox. And they seem to be hyping these prelim fights really well. Like, uh, it seemed to start with the Oven St. Prue fight, though. More so that one moving forward. Because uh, you could just see, they, they had him sit down, talk about what it is they were going to do, what they were training for, what they were ready to do in the cage. And, and I don't know, it just seemed, it seemed to want to get me committed to watching it. You know what I mean? Um, what did you think, Chris? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I liked what they did with it. Um, I mean, it was just cool that it was on Fox. The event seemed to really flow that way. You didn't have to change the channel. I mean, it was, yeah, it was cool. I liked it. It was a different change of pace. And, yeah, there were really good fights on the prelims. It lived up to everything, and I liked the packaging they had for them, too. Jonas, what about you? I liked it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, once the once the main car got started on Fox, it just kind of felt like it was uh, they they knew that they had something really special going on that night. So, uh, props to the entire uh, production, all the fighters that happened, all the fights that happened, all the fighters that uh, participated. They they really made something out of it. Definitely. Start from the bottom of the fo- uh, televised prelims. Aljamain Sterling versus Takei Misugaki. I was wrong on this one. I thought the experience would win the day, but mm-mm. Aljamain looked ridiculously good he came out with such a strong wrestling game not only that he uh utilizes very unorthodox kickboxing style it looked like karate mixed with um with uh, I, I guess you could say muay thai in the sense that he was throwing hard leg kicks um whenever he was on the out- what he was doing was keeping mizugaki on the outside which is very smart he's got long limbs and utilized them very well but he's also such a fantastic wrestler got mizugaki to the ground uh, numerous times uh, made it his fight, won each round, and then, uh, of course, in the third round, Mizugaki actually found his back, um, put Aljamain in trouble, and then there were a lot of good scrambles all- leading up to what was a fantastic submission off of his back. Aljamain Sterling getting, getting the uh, modified arm triangle choke from his back. Um, fantastic performance overall. I mean, he did basically what Max Holloway did later in the night or later in the pod we'll talk about um but just dominated the fight and got the late uh you know the late round submission and it was just a fantastic performance uh Chris what did you think yeah man I was really impressed by Aljamain Sterling's performance I didn't catch the full fight I saw probably a few minutes before the finish but uh like I said on the preview I thought he was going to be a little bit better everywhere especially in his home well not his home state in New York but Jersey as close as you can get right now yeah, he looked really good. And what, the funny thing is, 
when I was watching, I was watching with a friend of mine. He's kind of a casual MMA fan, and I was like freaking out when uh, Sterling got the uh, head knock choke from his guard. And my friend's like, "Bro, what's going on?" Like I had to explain to him why that was so impressive because you never really see that finish from there. I've seen maybe one or two people ever really go for that and go for it like fully. Mm-hmm. But Sterling got it. He and uh, Mizugaki looked like he's like, all right, I'm safe right now because I'm on top. I'm in his guard. I'm safe. And then he left his arm in there. And then uh, uh, Sterling went to the just went off to the side a little bit. And, and Mizugaki's like, oh crap, <laughs> I got caught. <laughs> yeah, he, he didn't look like he was very familiar with the position, and that's just a really impressive win for Sterling, keeping his undefeated record clean. It's also very impressive in the fact that Aljamain knew the the position himself like he had he was the one who had to catch that you know and he, oh, knew, yeah. he knew where his arm was he knew the position yeah. and just mm, clamp that bitch on it was great yeah he definitely he's definitely caught that in the gym before because i mean most guys would have let go at that point yeah now he's uh three wins into the ufc two uh two back-to-back very impressive performances uh finished uh hugo vienna with strikes and uh now takea mizugaki um, and Takeda was ranked six. You were, uh, as yeah. you said, uh, as we were talking about it yesterday, that is a very impressive win. And uh, I, I would think at the very least that puts him in the top 15. Yeah, um, I can see him jumping up to that top 10 right now. He's up in there at uh, Bantamweight. We have, I mean, yeah, there's uh, 10 is Yuri Alcantara, uh, Francisco Rivera. He might fall somewhere in that area. Jonas, did you? Uh, I know you saw the finish. What did you think of that? Well, you know, I had never seen that finish happen from the bottom ever before. So that was that's what I was, you know, going all nuts about. That's that made no sense to me. But uh, very impressive, uh, quite awesome actually. So I'm looking forward to see more of that guy. Who do you think uh, he should fight next? I, I feel like it should be someone else in the top 15. Keep his momentum going. See where he can take it. For me, mm-hmm. me well, personally, I think uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe a guy like Rivera. Oh, Rivera has a fight coming up, though. Johnny Eduardo, the guy who knocked out Wineland, who surprisingly... Has he fought st- since he fought Wineland? I don't know. That was a while ago. That was a while ago. No, I think he fought once. And then no, no, he hasn't. He I hasn't? Uh, he knocked out Wineland. Must have got injuries on him. Almost a year ago. So, I mean, if he's close to coming back, uh, yeah, I'd love to see that fight. Yeah, that fight, that yeah. knockout with Wineland is still fresh it's in my not, mind, but you're uh, right. It was, uh, does Caraway have a fight? I don't believe he does. Yeah, I mean, you can get him someone like that. Someone in that area. Um, I don't know if Frankie Cyan, or however you say his name, has a fight either, but someone around there. Yeah. Jonas, any ideas? Not really. I have no idea. Yeah. No idea where to go. Frankie Sainz might do. Frankie Sainz is uh is a surprising name to see up there, but I, only because I just recently forgot about his win against Uriel Contra, the very big upset. Um. <clears throat> yeah, I just uh, whether it's eleven through fifteen, I want to see him continue to fight the the tough competition and see where he can take it, man. I mean, uh, that was a very impressive win, and so I hope to see more of him. Yeah, I love how Alcantara is still ranked ahead of him, though. Yeah, and how Eddie Wineland is still ranked above uh, Eduardo. Man, those yeah. media needs to get the head at the ass is so bad. It's ridiculous. Yeah, some of the rankings aren't too great. But uh, Science might be a good one because he just fought in February, so it's not too far off. Yeah. That might not be bad. We need to update our rankings, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. We need to do that like right, like today. Yeah, I'll do it soon. All right, cool. John Vellante versus Corey Anderson w- would end up winning fight of the night, and it was a terrific fight. Um, for anybody who was watching, a lot of great, uh, a lot of great trades. Uh, Vellante Anderson went hard, and you know, up until the third round, I did have Anderson winning that fight though, and uh, it was an um, exciting fight to watch. And wow, John Vellante! <laughs> I mean, uh, that was a terrific fight, and with only what a minute left in the fight, that was ridiculously lucky in, in my opinion, but. So such a great shot, and of course got the win against Corey Anderson. The finish very late in the fight, and um, man, I mean, I don't know what else better to say than what a, a ter- terrific comeback, Chris. Yeah, I was really impressed. I mean, the fight was fun. I I thought Anderson was doing enough. He was starting to pull away a little bit. The first round was close. Second round was a little bit more for Anderson. Third round, Anderson was looking good still. 
I mean, I thought I thought Anderson at that point, I thought he was going to get a 30-27 decision across the board, but he got clipped by Volante. One punch lands, and that could change the fight. But Volante landed, and Anderson basically was out on his feet from that one punch. He turned away, and then Volante landed a few more punches and ended it. I really, that was a great comeback. I really didn't see Volante winning that. And, yeah, I mean, that's a good win for him. He picks up a win over the Ultimate Fighter winner, guy who was undefeated, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so, six and yeah, right. Yeah, it's a big win for him. Yeah, definitely. And uh, definitely want to see him get in there again. I do want to get to this next light heavyweight bout, though. Olven St. Prue taking on Patrick Cummins. You and, down with OSP? Uh, this is not me. <laughs> I, um, Jonas, you watched all of that fight, correct? Yeah, I watched all of it. All right, I'll, I'll, I'd love to hear your assessment of this fight. <laughs> I mean, there really wasn't a whole lot to watch, honestly. Outside of Patrick Cummins, uh doing as best he could to grapple. He wanted to take uh, OSP down as fast as he could. Uh, he got a really good slam in. We can give him props for that. But uh, honestly, I mean, we've had discussions about that. And uh, I, I thought that uh, Cummins would need to have effective grappling, much like Bader did in his match against OSP. And I, I just didn't feel like he had that. And he proved me right. So, uh OSP catches him with a very, very uh, sneaky uppercut. I mean, if you look at it, he hit it. There. While he was like, yeah, he snuck that right in. He hit it with his forearm, with his uh, right forearm, and he just snuck it right under and it connected with uh, Cummins' chin. And that was the whole story. Yeah, I mean, for me, the fight was uh, going how I, I, I thought it would to a degree. I was surprised how... how um, how OSP was able to get up, you know, he would get taken down a couple times, but yeah, he was able to get uh, right, right back, back up, up each time. time. So yeah, very. I mean, uh, you know, he he knew what he had to do. His striking was on par, and man, he another moving backwards uh, knockout, which he seems to be really good at <laughs> those counter shots he moving back. back. He didn't put backwards with that one. He actually came forward. No. Nah. Push forward with his. What? What I saw, he was coming forward. Nah, he was moving back. Let me see. I thought he was doing a Chris, break this one. What, what, how did you see it? Let me see. Yeah. Um, no, nah, he was moving backwards. I'm watching it right now. All right. While you guys, while you watch, um, yeah, just watching the fight, um, I picked OSP to win. I figured, as I think I was correct in, in saying that he worked his takedown defense a lot after losing to Ryan Bader. Ryan Bader out-wrestled him and kept him down. What I said in the preview podcast I said OSP will stuff some of Cummins' takedowns, and I think if he gets down, he'll pop back up because of what he learned from the beta fight. I think he learned from that. And if when he's on the feet, he's a dangerous guy. He was landing some good shots in that first round. Cummins did get him down one or two times, and that slam was really impressive. But OSP finished him six seconds left in the round, and at that point I was watching, and uh, OSP landed that jab uppercut, and you couldn't really see it because it was directly under Cummins' chin. And it kind of looked like he slipped, but I saw when Cummins like kind of looked up at OSP, he was rocked. Like you could tell he was rattled. He wasn't just it wasn't just a slip because he didn't get right back up and just try to back away. So he was definitely rocked. And OSP finished that fight six seconds left. Definitely another impressive win for him. And right now he's ranked um, at he's ranked uh, he's 12, seventh no? at two hundred five. But that win oh. might I don't know if he'll bump him up over Glover. But, yeah, you can get him another big fight soon. Maybe you give him uh, Manawa who just won. Ah, give him Glover. I'd love to give see that. Glover. I yeah, would love to see him versus that would Glover. That a good fight. You can yeah. give him Glover or Manawa. Does, has, Teixeira hasn't gotten a fight, has he? Um, I don't think so. Yeah. I'll check, but yeah, uh, I'm watching. I'm watching the video which was posted on the MMA discussion Facebook page. Um, that uh, you know, yeah, uh, what happened was Cummins came forward with the overhand right, and um, OSP takes a swift forward step back, but while he's doing that, he also threw an uppercut and it just landed perfectly. It was he's the perfect counter. The landing on his back foot. He yeah, it was the perfect counter. Foot. It was ridiculously good. Yeah. Oh, and uh, yeah, Glover is fighting uh, Gustafsson. Remember? Oh, that's right in Germany. So yeah, I think you give him Manoa. I think that's a good fight. All right, yeah, I'll take that Manoa's one too. Manoa's ranked eighth right now, so one yeah, both are very good strikers. So yeah, that yeah. that has fight of the night all over it too. Um, in my opinion, that's a really good fight. Jonas, any fights you want to see OSP in next? Uh, yeah, boy. Mano will be good. 
Mine will be good. You cool with that? That's definitely what I would want to see. Um, but you know, he's gonna have to. He is gonna have to take a few uh, more wins to get back toward the top. He was on a roll until uh, Bader derailed that little momentum train he had going. So yeah, I'm sir. not saying he's like the truth right now, but he, he's gonna need to earn it a little more. <laughs> the truth. Not, but he's good. If he if he isn't able, if guys aren't able to take him down, he could be a big problem up there. Oh yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, if he's if he's able to figure that issue out, he's uh yeah of course a, a huge force in that division, especially now when it's ripe for the taking for contenders thus far. Um, because after Johnson, you know, I I don't think there's a clear cut guy who's next after. So, no, not at all. Um, is Johnson will win that belt, by the way. Is Rashad so. Evans hurt still? Is who? Is Rashad Evans still? Is yeah, he's uh he's gonna be hurt. Yeah, he's not gonna be healthy to fight until the fall. Oh, okay. So I was thinking maybe you put him in, step him up in competition, put him in Rashad. But if he's out till the fall, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, I think he should still work on that grappling a little more because Rashad's one of those sneaky yeah. wrestlers, man. Uh, he can, yeah, he, he can, can, yeah. Sets things up very well. Yeah. So with that, you know, good win for OSP. Um, you know, I, I, the only thing that's suspect that I take negatively in OSP's performance is he did look a little tired uh, by the time he, the fight was finished. Um. And that's even before the the um the he actually landed the uppercut, which had me thinking like, oh, he's already starting to gas out. Cummins can keep up a decent pace. He'll tire him out. He'll win the judge's decision, which is what I figured would happen, because I felt like he was winning that round up until the, the uppercut. You know, it was a close yeah, round. Yeah, it was pretty close. Yeah, like I was yeah. about to say, it was pretty close up till that point. So, you know, um, yeah, I mean, uh. Both guys, I, I just, I mean, both uh, need to work on other things, but it's hard to take too much negative away. I mean, uh, it, overall, it was just, uh, it was such a perfectly landed counter, and uh, and Cummins just needs to work on his striking. So, that being said, we'll move on to the next fight. Um, Benil Dariush versus Jim Miller, and what was my fight of the night? I thought that the fight was fantastic. The prelims. What's up? Uh, the headliner of the prelims. The headliner of the prelims, and which was uh, my fight of the night, Benil Dariush, who I called, I finally got one right <laughs> in, the, in the prelims. It was the only, <laughs> it was the one prelim fight I got right, which is Benil going in there, taking it to Jim Miller like I thought he could. I saw the improvements. I could tell that you know working with Rafael Cordero was going to make a huge difference. Um, from a guy who came into MMA with just jujitsu in his background, has made such crazy leaps and improvement. Um, thus far, not only in his striking, but also in his grappling, which was already uh, grade A stuff by the time he was already starting in MMA. So, um, with that being said, uh, I, he did what I figured he could. He brought the game to uh, Miller. He used his size very well too. He is a big lightweight, um, and uh, you know, it was such a it was such a grapple fest that, but like an exciting one. It was so fun to watch. So many great scrambles. So many close submissions. Even from Miller, Miller made it a very competitive fight. Um, was never was never really out of it, and uh, and uh, you know kept Benil um, you know on top of his game. You know it, it was just it was one of those fights where both guys were pushing each other really hard, and it was a fun fight for me to watch. And and uh, I'm and I'm I'm an even bigger fan for Benil for putting on such a great performance against a tough guy like Miller. And you know so uh, he's got me. I'm a fan. Can't wait to see him in there again, Jonas. Yeah, I uh, I, I was hoping for Miller to win just for you know. Because it's Jim Miller. It's man. Jim Miller, he's man. Like, he's the man. I mean, I, I was torn with this fight. Yeah. yeah. It's Jim Miller. Nothing against Ben Neal Darius. He's been a, he's been on a roll since I've seen him get into action last year. But uh, you know, and, and I'm not upset that Ben Neal won. I'm I'm very happy for him. Uh, I hope he does well going forward. And I hope he can uh, make some waves in the division. But uh, you know, I think it's a little bit of a change in the guard going on. You know, Ben Neal is he's the truth. He's, he's getting better every time he comes out. So, I mean, he took the fight on somewhat short notice as well, didn't he? Yeah, he took it on like three and a half weeks short notice. Yeah. So Paul Felder was supposed was supposed to be the initial yeah, opponent. Was, yeah, Felder was supposed to be a time ago. Uh, yeah. I have nothing bad to say about Benil Darius. He's just, he's doing very well. Very well. Chris? Man, I thought I was I thought I was about to start thinking I was a prophet or something. When I said Jim Miller likes to submit these high level grapplers, he came very close. Oh yeah. He came very close in that first round. He was he was all over the place. Jim Miller was just going for it. 
in that first round. Jim Miller makes things fun. He goes for submissions over position a lot of the time. And this was like a grappling fan's dream MMA fight because it was just it was basically all grappling. So you uh, can start. Well, with that, you can see why it was my fight of the night. I'm, I'm oh yeah, that was a really it was a really fun fight to watch. I was so excited about the positions. And uh, Darius was good at maintaining position. Miller would look to – Miller just – I mean, he would go for submissions a lot. He would go for sweeps. He would try to get back to guard and then go for stuff from there. And then even when we saw Darius had his back, Jim Miller was doing everything he could to get out of it. And sometimes he looked like he would have been done and he survived. And, it, I mean, it was just really fun. I thought Jim Miller was going to be able to pull off something. I mean, he looked great in that first round, almost finished that arm lock. And he came close on a guillotine later on. He came close on a few things. And then Darius is good enough that he knows how to get out of them, knows how to be safe in those bad positions. And was and, able yeah. to really find offensive positioning with the yeah. defense. So. Yeah, I was really impressed by Darius. I knew he's good, but um, I wasn't sure if he was going to be able to get past a guy like Jim Miller. But he proved himself, and he's definitely going to be ranked somewhere in that top 15 at lightweight now. And it's a really really stacked division. I don't know who can give him next, but he earned this fight in the top 15. Definitely. I certainly agree. Um, I think, what, Jim Miller was ranked 12th, correct? I mean, look, uh, yeah. Who could he fight next? Uh, I mean, he's one of those guys where I see taking it real far into the division. I, I really do. Um, so, I, with that, I don't know who he'd fight next. Maybe, uh, I know a monster, maybe the loser or winner of Eddie Alvarez, Gilbert Melendez, maybe, or I don't know, Bobby Green, Ferguson maybe, but I would assume Ferguson he gets ranked. Had to fight with uh, Josh Thompson in July. Oh, that's right. He took that. Uh, he took that fight after Josh got injured from his previous fight, and now he's taking this fight. That's a whole mess. Hmm. Yeah, there are a lot of a lot of the guys are booked. They are, huh? Yeah. I mean, I guess you should wait until some of those play out, and and you know, wait for the. Yeah, uh, and I figure he'll probably want a little bit of time because he's been in there twice in the last month. Yeah, that's true. So if he does take some time, you can give him if he depending on how long he wants to sit out, you can give him Ferguson Thompson winner maybe depending how that goes. Or Melendez Alvarez winner, I would like, or at least loser maybe. But um. yeah, I don't know if they'll give him that just because one of those guys there. Uh, if either one of those guys wins, they're going to be in the top five. So I don't know if they'll give him that. Agreed. Jonas, who would you yeah. like to see him fight next? Um, I can see winner of. Uh, uh, Josh Thompson and um, the other guy. What was it? His name? Sorry. Josh. Um, Josh Tony Thompson. Ferguson. Yeah. Yeah, Tony Ferguson. Yeah. I could definitely see that happening. I'll say this right now. I have Ferguson winning that. Because uh, I don't remember. Uh, I don't think we talked about that. Which Tony Ferguson shows up. Yeah, it's possible. If he keeps it on the feet, it's probably best for him to keep it on the feet. Definitely. Yeah, I agree. That being said, Benil Dariush, the future truth, in my opinion, at lightweight. Yeah. Calling totally it. Impressive. Calling it. <laughs> I like it. We'll move on to the main card now in a fight that has been hotly debated by us thus far. <laughs> <laughs> Paige Van Zant versus Felice Herrig. Now, I'll just I'll, – I'll let Jonas say his piece. Go ahead. Okay. Well, so here's, here's what I'm looking at. Paige Van Zandt is what, 20, 21? 21. 21. Okay. How long has Felice Herrick been fighting? In MMA? Yeah, yeah. About. Combat. Combat. Not just MMA. Her take boxing also. And did she box a little? Yeah, but she yeah. did two or three, she's, yeah. She's 10 years older than Paige, and she's been fighting. 10 years older than Paige, wow. and has been fighting for basically, you know, half of Paige's life. Her first, first yeah. kickboxing fight was in 2005. So 10 years ago. That's what I'm saying. So she's been fighting for, you know, half of Paige's life, basically. She has experience. And Paige, who has, you know, not nearly as much experience as any of the fighters on that card, just dominates her. I mean, Paige is the truth. I am giving Paige the props for being that, that inexperienced and being able to do what she did to police Harry. She, gets all, she deserves all the props in the world. But this is just telling me that Felice has been extremely overhyped. She's been about right. She can't. I mean, she's already lost to Ronda. She lost. Uh, she lost to Carlos Farris before they both came to the UFC. 
She's not meeting anybody at the top, man. She's not meeting somebody like Paige, who I see getting there to the top very soon. She's not going to win a belt. Mm. Okay. All right. Well, is that, that's that's it. That's all you got. That's not what you had earlier. Go Was it, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. All right. So when I, uh, I was very surprised by how this fight went, I expected a lot more Felice. I expected to be able to keep this on the feet and compete with Paige in the grappling exchanges. And I thought this was a bad matchup for Paige. I did not think this was going to go well. I thought it was a little bit feeding her to the walls a little bit too quickly, just because of how experienced Felice is and. That what she's shown on the feet, but yeah, I was definitely wrong. Paige looked good. I yeah, you gotta give it to her again, as Jonas said. She's twenty one years old, she's the same age as me. She was born in the same year, and she's in the UFC doing well. So I mean, all the props to her, but Felice looked like she didn't know what she was doing. I mean, I heard jujitsu, as I told Nick, I thought it would look kinda white belt level to me. I mean she there was there was positionings, like she threw up some I mean, yeah, it's obviously when you're getting punched in the face, it's hard to throw up stuff, but she threw up some arm bars. She, I guess, threw up maybe a triangle, but she didn't really threaten too much with anything. She was, had some positions. She had an arm bar where, like, she has the arm bar. Paige goes to get out of it. Felice winds up basically with a perfect omoplata. I mean, I know it's hard to finish, and it's hard huh. to get. It's very hard to finish, very hard to get, but at least attempt it. She just looked like she didn't know where she was. And then uh, Felice, uh, Paige just jumped on her again, got into a better position. She had plenty of chances to go for anything from half guard when Paige is standing. She doesn't even go under to look for the leg or anything. And then there's, I think, two or three times where Felice had Paige's back, had her back completely, and just loses the position in five seconds and gets mounted or gets put in side control. And just was getting beat up the entirety of the fight aside from that first round where she looked okay. I mean, it was a close first round, but Felice, if you, I, I've never really seen in the UFC level, unless you're going against a high level dude and you luckily get his back, where you have someone's back and you just like let them go and they get a fantastic, it's not even like she turned in and got to her guard. She paid, just wound up like getting straight into side control, getting into mount. And every time they scrambled, when Felice had good position, she lost it every single time. Every single time when they went into some sloppy scramble, Paige wound up on top. I can't fault Paige for the fight being sloppy, but it was a sloppy fight grappling wise. Mm hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, here's my assessment of it. I, of course, don't believe it was white belt level. I believe that for an MMA fight, it's hard to gauge a white belt level kind of jujitsu fighter. But Felice is only a blue belt, <laughs> so. Um, uh, yeah, that's fair. What's fun? What's funny as well is Paige is also a blue belt at the same spot as her right now, as far as belting system goes. But you also forget Paige did a lot of wrestling in her youth and yeah. trained with trained with a, a really wrestling heavy um, fight camp, starting off at at the Lions Den, and then now trains at Alpha Male, where wrestling is a huge, huge thing. And the only place where Felice trains at is Team Curran, where it's just either jiu-jitsu or a lot of Muay Thai and kickboxing. And kickboxing is your specialty. And, of course, it was very closely contested on the feet. On the ground, she's dealing with a person who has been wrestling half her life, as young as she is, has wrestled half her life, and is doing and is at a jiu-jitsu level equivalent of hers uh, on paper. So I, I wasn't surprised when I find all this out to see that that's how the fight uh, played out. You know, I didn't look too into it, but finding all that out it explains it. It's not a matter of experience or, you know, um, you know, skill level. She has been competing for half her life more, but she did mostly striking. This fight was contested a lot on the ground where Paige, actually being the younger fighter, has more experience still. You know, so it, 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 she actually used the experience that she has to her advantage in this fight and took any experience that Felice had away. It wasn't a matter of... To me, her uh, Felice not being good uh, or good enough to, to win this fight, she could have. But, you know, Van Zant took it to where she was the better fighter and she knew that she would be and um, and won that fight. And that was incredible because of the, the pace that she used, the the, aggress the aggression she used. She really made it seem like, you know, there was no stopping her. She looked like a, a little mini female Kane to me, Kane Velasquez. She That's used a such a great... 
um, offensive ground and pound that really shut down that, that, that submission game anyway. I think Felice was more worried about not getting hit in the face anymore than going for any submissions off her back. And that didn't stop her from trying to go for submissions off her back. She didn't go for as many as I guess you would have hoped, but she tried, definitely. I, I wouldn't say that Felice was bad in this fight. Paige was just too good. That's my assessment of this fight. Nick, I don't think it, Nick, you know, and nor do I, nor do, nor did I ever say when we were talking about it earlier um, that I believe that Felice gets to the title or fights for it someday. Oh. I, I, I've said that she has the potential to. I never said that it was like a foregone conclusion that she was totally going to. I, I thought she was going to win this fight. I thought she was going to win it too. You, definitely. You calling her, you calling Paige a mini looks like a mini Cain Velasquez. That's a stretch and a big one at that. I mean, she's good. She's very young, and, and I mean, I say that in the sense of the game know, plan that she used. I, I know, I go. I don't saying. think you do though, because then you're no, saying. I, I get what you're saying. She got on top. She was looking for ground and pound, and yeah, I get what you're saying in that fact. But you guys. No, but you what, don't. What, okay, go ahead. Yeah, Nick, I get what you're saying. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, I <laughs> Silly bitch. I, I All right, go ahead. Saying, but also remember, Felice has been fighting MMA for what six seven years she should regardless of if they're both blue belts as you said on paper they have equal experience that's because a lot of people don't get ranked outside of the gate just because they're both blue belts Felice has been training at least some sort of grappling for at least six years that did not look like someone who's been training grappling for at least six years mm, well maybe she hasn't you know I mean I'm what not saying she has she's still even even into her MMA her. career she was still doing kickboxing you know? You know, yeah, so. but you have to. You can't just go in with no grappling and expect to win. She did that for the first five fights of her career. <laughs> She's never trained grappling whatsoever. I don't know if she. I'm if not saying she did, but we don't know that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but I mean, does, if you're train, if you're training for an MMA fight, you got to be training MMA, which includes grappling. I'm sure that's when she started. You know, that's but what I'm saying, and she started her career, her pro career, at, in 2009. Which was six years ago. Yeah, and Paige has started her athletic career in the sense of wrestling and jujitsu, or at least some form of it, by when she was a teenager. That's counting what, fifteen, sixteen. So that's also yeah, five, six I know, years. But I'm saying just because Felice is a blue belt doesn't really make her a blue belt because she's been training for six years. She should be have a higher level than yeah. She's a blue belt. Maybe that's in the gi. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure, but. If you've been training grappling for six years, you should be able to do more than that, especially when you have top position or you have better position. And she was like there; it didn't last very long on the feet. But when she got to the feet, she was winning the exchanges. She when she has top position, why isn't she getting up instead of getting reversed? Mm -hmm. I mean, like I said, I believe it's more a matter of you know um, in the fight moment. She was getting hit with all kinds of shots. You know what I mean? She got hit. She got outstretched in each round what by um, by what I believe is like 33% more output oh, yeah, from Paige. Oh, yeah, it was ridiculous. It was, it was crazy. Gotcha. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was just an all-out great fight by Paige. Uh, like I said, I wouldn't take away anything from Felice in that fight. I believe it was just all Paige. That's, how, that's my assessment. You know, I mean, she certainly needs to still work on it, but at the same time, she's looked great on the ground before, and... Um, you know, so, I mean, it's not like, you know, sometimes you have good fights, sometimes you have bad fights. That was a bad fight for her. She really, she, I mean, it started off really close. I mean, it was contested halfway on the feet in the clinch and on the ground in the first round, and that was a very close first round. And then Paige just turned that shit up and then just basically took Felice out of that fight completely. Dunked her on her head, completely destroyed her with ground and pound. And as I was saying earlier with 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 comparing her to Kane, I said that she looks like her. It looks like him in the sense that she had a cardio that looked insane and had an output of strikes that looked insane, similar to Kane. I wasn't saying that she is the next Kane in that division or anything. I'm just saying it reminded me of him more than yeah, anything. Yeah, I was just saying that's a stretch because Kane doesn't get reversed. Kane doesn't really get into many scrambles when he has guys on the ground. He's usually able to keep them there, and if they pop back up, he just takes them right back down. Okay, uh, then I will retract what I said and say she reminded me of Kane, not she I'm not, wasn't I'm not Kane. trying to pick him. <laughs> Jonas, any last thoughts on this fight? And actually, who would you like to see Paige Van Zant fight next? Uh, Paige Van Zant, and let's see, she's coming off a win, so she needs to fight. Somebody else coming off of a win. Uh, outside of uh, uh, maybe uh, 
Well, I know she didn't win, but maybe uh, Random Marcos. Random Marcos. Hmm. She's, set, she's set to face uh, Aslan Daly. Oh. Uh, at, at, uh 186 next weekend. Let's, let's look at the roster here. We can give her the winner of that fight. I'm going to go ahead and take a peek at this roster real quick, just so I know. You know, we were talking about it, you and I, uh, that the winner of that fight could potentially fight Joanna and Jacek with the division being so wide open. No. Um, I still believe oh, it's too Marcos early. Fight talking about? I'm sorry? Are you talking about the Marcos Daly fight? No, I'm talking about this fight. Paige Van Zandt versus Felice, the winner of that fighting for the title? Yeah, we talked about that. I don't think podcast. that's a good idea. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I'm not saying. Yeah, I'm saying I'm agreeing with you. Yeah, I don't believe it's a good idea. But with how, <clears throat> with how dominant Paige looked, I can see coming off a great performance, the UFC wanting to give her that fight. I'm I not saying that's the they fight do. they should give her. What? I don't think they do. Yeah. Well. I yeah. don't think they want to rush her into that. It's too. I think it's a little bit too much too soon. I mean, it's a young division, so you're gonna have to put her in these fights. Like everyone thought of the Felice fight that you think she's going to lose, and it might not be the best matchup for her, but I think they want to work her up a little bit, get her a few more wins in there. I think they might give her the winner of uh, Daily Marcos, or maybe you give her Marna Moroz next. I'll say this. I agree with you. I don't believe that she should get that fight next. Um, you know, I, I would like to see her fight somebody else. You know, very, I mean, uh, I wouldn't be opposed to Carlos Sparza. Um, yeah. that might also know. be a little I, bit be too much too soon, but at the same time, you know that's a great fight. So yeah, I mean, I I just don't think they'll give her someone like that up there right now. I think Tisha they'll Torres give her fighting next. I Is actually like that one, Tisha Torres. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. I like that I, one since both are very grapple heavy. Uh, yeah, I don't think because I think she'll move up off page. We'll move up somewhere like in the eighth spot where Felice is right now. And I, I mean, giving her Marcos versus Daly, the winner of that, she can, if whoever's there is probably going to be a few slots ahead of her and move her up a little bit. Yeah, I didn't even take the rankings Marcos. into account. Yeah, the rankings are a little bit suspect over there because there's so many new people coming in winning and it's a very shallow division. Yeah, right everybody now, so. has just one or two fights. The one who has the most fights is Joanna, who has three. <laughs> three no. Yeah. So uh, I just I don't think they'll throw her in there one of the top five yet. I think they want to work her up, get mm -hmm. her another fight, and then give her one of those top five. We'll see. I wouldn't be opposed to Tisha Torres is all I'm saying. I actually like that fight. So um yeah. I would think she gets put into the ten. But yeah, I mean whether it be Randa Marcos or you know, yeah, I think Tisha Torres makes uh, sense. Tisha has a fight coming up at, uh, against Angela Hill. Oh, at 188, Hill. huh? That's yeah. right. Who's she fighting? Angela Hill. Oh, she'll kill her. Probably. Yeah. That's lame. Poor Angela. Yeah, maybe yeah. you give her the winner of that. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, Angela There's Hill's got great striking, but uh, she showed – you, you want to talk about white belt status. She, that, that girl showed it in the, <laughs> in the house to me. But she's yeah. so young, she's only 2-0, and oh, so – um, yeah, but she looked like she never trained jujitsu in her life. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, she had a Muay Thai career prior to going into MMA. I mean, I would think she's trained a little bit at it, but yeah. I, definitely not enough to hang with someone like Tisha Torres. So, I mean, yeah. Tisha I probably mean, wins I, that fight. So. I can see her giving, if Tisha wins or Angela Hill wins, probably, it could be one of those. It could be Marcos versus Daly winner. It could be Moroz. I mean, I could see her getting a few of those fights yeah. just to... I like that they're all booked. I like that they're keeping that division busy. They know what's up yeah. and give it a year. This division is going to look awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll move on to, to the next fight. After a long <laughs> debate finally comes to an end. Um, the next fight on the card. Oh, man. Cub Swanson versus Max Holloway, which is which was, of course, an exciting fight as I knew it would be, but for m much different reason than I thought it would be. Um, Max Holloway, who I'm, I've been very high on, and, and that's why this fight tore me apart. Because uh, I'm a I'm a huge Cub fan, but I've become a huge Max Holloway fan as well because he's you know he's just such a humble kid and you know is uh is really tough goes in there doesn't you know doesn't make an ass out of himself by any means and and goes in there and fights his ass off all the time and was, has looked drastically improved in each and every fight moving forward and uh, and this was easily the best performance of his entire career thus far against the toughest dude arguably. Um, in, in his career, so I, I gotta say I, I was tremendously impressed. His striking looked great. It didn't ever hit the ground until the end of the fight, which of course he he found the submission, 
and um, you know, 15 or 14 and a half total minutes of dominance from uh, Max Holloway. And uh, man, I, I got to tell you, that was a great fight uh, from beginning to end. His counter striking game was on point. He knew where to hit. He knew where to swing. He knew where not to be so that he didn't get hit. His, oh man, his footwork was on par. God, I, it was just such a great A plus performance for me that you know, I was in the, there's nothing bad I can say about uh, his game in there whatsoever. Chris, dude, it was fantastic. I was absolutely shocked. I thought Cub Swanson was a little bit better everywhere. I thought he'd be able to take this fight over a guy Max Holloway who looked really good. But man, Max Holloway looks so good. This is obviously easily dude. his best performance of his career. And um, I, yeah, I mean Cub Swanson's probably outside of Conor McGregor, the best guy he's faced, bar none. And I mean, he was Holloway was just. Like you said, he knew where not to be. He wasn't getting hit with coach big shots. He was landing one twos. He was using his reach very well. Outside, of, even though they said Cub and Holloway have similar reaches, which was a little surprising given the height differential, Holloway was landing one twos every time Cub would throw. He leave himself open. Holloway would land. He was staying out of the way of the big shots. I mean, he, he threw his kicks right. unpredictably as well. Yeah. He didn't throw them often, but when he threw yeah. them, you didn't see him coming. He threw everything correctly. He threw it at the right time. He, had, he did everything right. That's what you want to see a guy. When you talk about a perfect performance, that's basically it. And then, I mean, at the th in the third round, Cubs might have been even a little broken at that point. I mean, he tried his best to get out of that guillotine. You saw him grimacing. He was fighting out of it. And he just got caught again. He got submitted again. And, I mean, it sucks for Cub because he's a really talented guy. But this is an another changing of the guard. Holloway really proved himself here to be a top guy in the division. I want to see him versus Chad Mendez next. Same. I was going to call it Chad Mendez. Jonas, did you see this fight? Uh, what did yeah. you think of the crazy yeah, performance? I'm a huge fan of uh, Max Holloway. Um, as also, I'm a huge fan of Cole Swanson, just like you guys. You know, uh, they're both, those are the kind of fighters that, you know, they don't talk a whole lot, but they say it with their fists. You know, they say it with, you know, what they do in the, in the octagon. And uh, you can't really uh, put a price on that. You know? that's, that's just beyond valuable. There, there are guys that make the sport uh, as great as it is, you know. So, uh, you know, seeing them fight and just knowing that one of them has to lose sucks. But at the end of the day, that's, that's the name of the game. So, I uh, I was very happy with the fight. Um, Max is on a tear. I would love to see him fight Chad Mendez at this stage, just like you guys. Because Chad's pretty much the wall right now. He's he's the bar um, to determine who's gonna you know do something in this division. He's the number two guy, so I mean it just yeah. makes sense. And he's the and, bar. and uh and now you know um he holds um, Max is now tied with Connor for uh, most wins uh, in a row and has won four of them by finish. You know uh, very similarly to Connor McGregor's streak. And I think the st their streaks are very compatible at, uh, at the same time oh, because yeah, extremely. you know because uh, when Max and Connor first fought that I mean that was what six fights for Con uh, Max ago, um, you know I would say he was still mid tier guy still trying to come up he was I think he was still twenty one uh, or or probably twenty two but either way um, he was still mid tier and then Connor beat these other guys that either weren't ranked or were barely ranked and. Uh, and then, of course, had that one win against Poirier, who was top ranked. And then now Cub yeah. has done that and actually um, beat a top ranked guy himself. So now they both have very similar streaks. But if Max can beat Chad Mendez, he will be more deserving than Connor ever was, in my opinion. And I think that you know beating uh, Chad Mendez means something. It would be impressive as all hell if he could get that win. It, it would be yeah. certainly be a very tough mountain for Max to climb. But after this fight, it's going to be hard to really truly doubt him. You That's know. a very big if, very big if. Well, of course it's a big if, but like as I said, you know, w w with this fight, you can never doubt this kid again. You got to give oh, him some props. Oh, no. I mean, absolutely. But that's Chad Mendes has only ever lost to Jose Aldo, and he's just looked unstoppable outside of that. So, and even if they make that matchup with the, I hope they do because I don't really see many other options. There are a few, but I don't see too many. I think that uh, beating Chad Mendes is going to be a tall task. For anybody, of course, yeah. Oh, Even really? for Aldo at this point. Because it should be. Yeah. Yeah, you're not the number two guy in the in the division for a reason, so. Yeah, he shouldn't be expected to be a pushover. He's got to be a challenge. He's absolutely going to be a challenge. Oh, absolutely. That's what you want to see when, that's what you want to see when you got a guy like uh, Max Holloway coming up. 
So it's, you know, it's a very fun division. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And if you see that out of uh, you know, if Chad being as dominant as he is, if somehow, some way, Max Holloway beats him, you know, it just like Nick said, it makes his uh, title contendership that much more legitimate than uh, Conor McGregor's has ever been. I mean, I, I just, he will be undeniable at that I point. I think at this Ooh. point, I mean, I think Conor's win over Poirier was very impressive. He's won his fights so impressively, and he's obviously his talking helped him get there. I think he earned his title shot at this point. I mean, the only other guy there was Frankie, and he already fought Aldo. So at that point, I mean, you got to give it to Conor. But if anyone beats Mendez, they obviously deserve a title shot without question. Mm-hmm. If you beat Chad Mendez, you deserve a title shot. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Basically, as if like anybody beats Benavidez, they could probably get a title shot, or somebody beating Dos Santos could probably get a title shot. You know what I mean? Those yeah. are just it's the like number those... two guys who can only be beat bested by the champ. Yeah, I I can't call them gatekeepers because they're not like in the technical sense of the word, but they're basically the gatekeeper to the champion. If that makes yeah, any sense. They're high, yes, they're a very high level gatekeeper. Like, they're like not... the highest <laughs> level. Of, like they lost to the yeah. champion. They both lost, all those guys you said lost to the champion twice. Multiple times, yeah. They're, they're the second guy. Like, no one else could beat them but the champion in their divisions right now. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait. Hope, them, hope they make it happen, UFC. Make it happen. We'll move on to the co main event, which, you know, was there any surprise, really? <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. Yeah. I mean, I, I the only surprise was Chris didn't last longer. I mean, he actually got bested about a half a, half a minute and a minute shorter than the last fight. I'm not surprised by that either. Uh, <laughs> that's the only thing that surprised me. Yeah, I thought Chris would've, was was going to be able to survive longer, but man, Jacare got like a slick, solid takedown on him and uh, was able to, uh, you know, of course, secure the armbar after Kamozi made some uh, pretty bad mistakes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was a perfectly timed takedown, and then basically Kamozi's like, all right, I'm going to try to hold guard. I'm going to try to hold half guard up. Uh, no. No, not happening. Not happening, man. He's just so <laughs> yeah, I was, strong. That's exactly man. what I was, I was expecting. I'm like, all right, Jacare got him down. The fight's over. That, I didn't think Kamozi had a chance from there. Yes. Yeah, I agree. I agree with Chris. And then he got that arm bar. Kamozi got his arm out. And then kind of, I mean, I can't even blame him because how good Jacare is. Jacare got his arm right back. He didn't have enough time to get up and, and try to – put pressure on Jock Ray to defend. I, you can't blame him. Jock Ray's that good. Once he got him down, that fight was over. Yeah, man. Great fight. And good for Jock Ray again to get the win. And, uh, you know, we'll talk about who he should fight after we go over the main event here. Um, Leota Machida versus uh, Luke Rockhold in a fight. Another fight that really surprised me. Um, I, be- I, I, I told everyone that I believe that Machida's counter-striking game would be on point and that he'd be able to, uh, you know, avoid the ground game. But, uh, you know, one, the, I mean, that, that strike that looked like it dropped him, but didn't drop him, but like he connected, but it didn't look like something that could drop somebody, you know, and then he just kind of lost his footing, got put on the ground. And once Luke was on top of him, man, the, oh, it was just, it was, it was bad. It was bad town brown for him right there at that point because Luke went off on him with ground and pound in that first round, and Leoto was saved by the bell, and then he went wobbling to his corner like he'd just been jumped. It was so bad. And of course, he gets sits on his corner. You see his eye. It's swelling. He looks like hell. And then, of course, the fight starts, and he doesn't look anywhere near as fast or as ready for a fight uh, in that fight. He took he basically took him out in that first round. He just needed to finish him in the, in the, in the second. And he found it. He was able to get him down to the ground again um, because there was no way Machida was going to recover fast enough by in that round to, to really get away from Luke. Luke took advantage, got him to the ground, found the submission. It was perfect. It was an overall fantastic performance. That was another grade A performance from somebody against a high-level guy like Machida, which you rarely ever see. You know, I think that was the best performance against Machida next to Shogun's knockout of him in the first round when they fought for the title um, that we've seen in such a long time. You know what I mean? And uh, so, great fight overall. Um, Luke Rockhold staking his name, fourth four straight fight, fourth straight finish. And uh, now the problem is uh, that we find ourselves in. But before we get to that, actually, I'll let you talk about the fight. Jonas, what did you think of the finish? 
Uh, yeah, I definitely didn't see it coming. Um, <laughs> I didn't see that coming at all, but, uh, you know, Lou Grockhold has been on a tear at the same time. He's been on a roll. He's, you know, you got to give him a chance to uh, fight for a belt at some point. I think he should get, uh, honestly, I think he should get Weidman after this. But, um, you know, just the way he uh, beat Machida, the way, you know, just by you know, cashing him with that submission, that just, wow, makes no sense. Makes no sense. It was, oh man, it was it was such an amazing performance. I want to watch it again right now. I have it on my DVR. <laughs> Chris, what did you think? Yeah, I mean, after that, I think Rockhold undoubtedly earned the shot at the title, the winner of uh, Weidman versus uh, uh, Belfort coming up soon. I think Rockhold, no one does that to Leota Machida. Like we saw the knockout of Machida when the Shogun got him, but like it, it was different yeah, because... Oh yeah, the Jones submission. I mean, that those were like one. Like Jones caught him, got him, caught him. Shogun caught him. Rockhold dominated him. You don't yeah. see Leona Machida dominated like that. He's so hard to even get to the ground. And then when he gets there, he pops back back up. We saw him pop back up against Weidman. Rockhold proved a lot in this fight. He proved that when he gets guys down, he keeps them there. And he's just, he's not gonna get rocked in the feet. He's a huge. He's a big dude. He might be bigger than Weidman. And he's skilled everywhere. Once we saw Machida land a couple of strikes, and then Rockhold's like, all right, got to get in this. And then once he got him to the ground, Machida had no answer. Rockhold was all over him, got him on his stomach, belly up with hooks in, and was just wailing away at him, landed a clean shot to end the round, the big elbow. And Machida was out of it after that point. He came back. He was tired. He didn't look like he was in it. Rockhold got him back to the mat finished with a submission, and I mean, he completely dominated Lyoto Machida from the midway through the first round to the end of the fight, and I was extremely, extremely impressed by him. Same, man. Now, that's the thing, is that now it's between who gets the next shot, Jacare or um, Luke Rockhold. Jacare being on a six-fight win streak and Luke being on a four-fight win streak, it's very... It's very, I don't know, for me, it's a hard call to say who gets the next fight, I believe, because Luke's victory over Machida is more impressive than Jacare's over Kamozi, which kind of hurts Jacare, even though it's something that was out of his control. Um, makes it very difficult, you know, but it's a very uh, odd problem. The way I see it is if, you know, if Weidman, um, you know, beats Vitor, then make Weidman, um, uh, Rockhold, and then if Vitor wins, then make Vitor Jacare. In my opinion, that's the way I would do it. Um, but how do you guys? You, I know Chris, you said you would like to see Rockhold get the shot. Jonas, do you? Yeah, agree? yeah, I definitely want to see Rockhold get the shot. Just, just off the strength of his victory on, uh, on Machida. Yeah, no, I think that was, that was the biggest victory that either of them have that went over Machida. And, I mean, yeah, uh, Jacare has a couple impressive wins in his UFC stint. Two of them have come over Chris Camozzi, who both times probably shouldn't have been in there with him. He has a uh, win over Okami. Which, uh, Okami's pretty impressive. The Carmel fight's pretty impressive as the well. And then he has Gagor a Sumat of Musashi. Yeah. Those are three impressive wins. But, I mean, if he would have beaten Yoel Romero the way he beat Camozzi, that would have been a different story. I know that's not his fault, but... I don't know. I feel like Rockhold is a bigger threat to why we If Weidman wins, I really want to see him versus Rockhold because I think Rockhold is the biggest threat, undoubtedly, to Weidman. I mean, yes, Jacare is be better on the ground, but I don't think he can get Weidman to the ground, and I think Weidman's a better striker. Jacare has power, but he has to connect. I, don't, I think Weidman will keep him on the end of that, while Rockhold, he might not be able to get Weidman down. Weidman might take him down, but I can see... Rockhold popping back up. I could see him scrambling, working from the ground, and then standing up. It's anyone's game. I think that's the best fight that they can make if Chris Weidman wins is Luke Rockhold. I think that's a fight the fans, more fans probably want to see that fight. I think it's a better fight than Jacare, and I, especially if they want to put that in Madison Square Garden, I think Luke Rockhold versus Chris okay. Weidman is a sellable fight, and I want to go there. <laughs> yeah, calling out MSG the garden like that. I liked, I did like that. That was pretty dope. Um, 
if you guys do think that Luke fights uh, Weidman or whoever the title holder is after this May, um, get f for the title next, what happens to Jacare then? What do you think should happen with him? That's tough because there's really not a lot of guys left for him to fight. Um, at middleweight, they, I guess they could try making Yoel again, depending on how long he's out for. Um, how long is he out for? Let me see. I have no clue. Go ahead and I, keep talking, but I'm going to find that out right now. What else can you give him? I mean, he's beating Tim Kennedy. He's beating Musasi, who's ranked 7. You're not going to give him Anderson Silver because we know why already. Um, Rockhold, you're not going to give him because the timing works out too well for one of these guys to get a title shot next. Um, maybe you give him Lyoto or Vitor if they lose. I mean, well, Lyoto already lost, but maybe you give him Vitor if he loses to Weidman. Or if you beat Wyman, I mean, maybe you do it because Rockhold already lost to Vitor. But outside of that, I don't see much. Uh, Tali Zalates, I don't know if he's booked or not, but I don't know if they even want to make that fight. I don't know. You can give him Yoel. You can give him maybe give him Ladies. I don't know if they even want to do that. Or you can give him Leoto or Vitor if he loses. There's a few shots that they have of not like they can make that fight. Like I could see them making Vitor versus. Uh, Jacare if he loses to Weidman, but that would also kill a contender if Vitor is to be Jacare. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's tough. There's not a lot to say about that. It's very hard to decide what to do. If they do give Rockhold the title shot, uh, it's tough to decide what to do with Jacare, but I think there's a few options out there, especially if Yoel isn't out for too long. Jonas, what do you think? I, you know, I agree with Chris. I think he has, I think he had all the right answers there. I can't think of any other possible uh, yeah, that. Very I'm limited. Is there anything specific you'd want to see for Jacare? Um, personally, I'd love to see Jacare Rocco rematch at some point, even at the even if it's for the belt. That would that would be odd for me, to be honest. Uh, hold on, I'm still. I, I see that the injury was that Yoel blew his knee out. Did he tear his ACL? No, it wasn't that serious. They would have just said that. All right. So, I mean, I wouldn't expect him to be out for – I mean, he is older, so you never know. Yeah. But I wouldn't expect him to be out for too long if he didn't care anything. So I'm not entirely – I don't know. It's tough. It's a very tough situation there. Uh, oh, I'm 40 sure days. That's something. That's not bad. How long? 40 days. Oh, no, that's fine. That's – just over a month, I think they can try to rework that fight. I don't know if they'll want to, but I think that's the best option outside of the title shot for Jock, right? Yeah, I mean, that means he didn't injure his knee too bad. That means just a couple more weeks after as well for recovery and just making sure his knee works in combat. And yeah, I, think I mean, Jock Ray doesn't have too much to complain about. Yeah, he's not getting the title shot, but he just went in there, dominated Chris Camozzi, got him some money, didn't take any damage. Yeah. I like it. I'm cool with that if that's how it goes down. Uh, but as I said, I wouldn't be opposed to Jacare getting it either, especially if Vitor wins. I don't think he will, but if Vitor wins, then Jacare fighting Vitor, I would like to see that fight. That'd be cool. More so, it's more sellable for me. I don't know about other fans, but for me, um, it's more it's more sellable than Luke Vitor too. You know what I mean? I mean, I could see a Luke Vitor too, especially considering oh, well, yeah. that Vitor was on TRT at that point. There's a lot to it where I think Luke wins that rematch. But I think I, I understand your reasoning. I could see them going Jacare if Vitor was to win that fight. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If Weidman wins, it's Luke Rockhold uh, versus Weidman, and if, J if Vitor wins, it's Jacare. And then with Luke, I don't. I don't now that I got to think of what they would do with Luke under that. <laughs> under uh, that I think there's a little bit more options for Luke because you can give him Romero. You can maybe give him uh, ladies. I think they could do a few things, but it's still not many options. Yeah. I wouldn't want him to fight ladies, but at the same time, I guess it makes sense because ladies to me seems like a possible contender. But I would like to see it at the fight. same time because I would want to see that fight, see what happens. Because then ladies, ladies could take. Fight? Uh, does he? I don't know. I'm um, checking right now. No, he doesn't. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. He doesn't? I checked. He doesn't have a fight. Oh, okay. Cool. Cool. So, yeah, I, like I mean, that. that's a possibility because he is an up-and-coming guy. He's won a few straights. So, they always have him in the back pocket if they need him. All right. Cool. 
Well, that was UFC on Fox uh, 15 review. That was, again, as we've said, a terrific event. One of my favorites uh, yeah, of the year. Best cards in a while. Yeah, one of the best cards of the year, I've said. And, of course, you know, like I said, another thing that we got to keep watching for is this year, man, it's all about upsets. Um, half the half the, um, half the the main card was filled with upsets as well as the prelims. So, I mean, it's just, man, upsets seem to be the theme this year, and I like it. Um Makes me feel a lot better about my Johnson pick. <laughs> Didn't you say that would be an upset if Jones won? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, I'm talking about on paper, though. <laughs> it's not an upset to me. If Jones wins, I'll be like, I didn't see that happening. Everything. <laughs> on paper, I know that Jones will be the favorite for stupid reasons. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I um. You know, that's the thing is that there's been so many upsets this year already that it's made it a very fun year to watch fights, and I, and I like it. So, um, you know, uh, I was going to bring up something else with Jonas. Yeah, things have been, yeah, really unpredictable this year. I like it. Yeah. What was I going to bring up with you, Jonas? I forget. Nate Diaz. Or- Nate Diaz. Oh, you son of a bitch. All right. Wow, Nate Diaz. <laughs> Okay, well, I don't know. I uh, First of all, what do you think should happen with him with all these shenanigans that he's been going on with lately? You know, um, basically, let, me, let me recap everything. Uh, basically, he uh, was given a fight with Matt Brown, um, and in you know, pretty uncertain terms, he's basically turning that fight down. Because he doesn't appreciate how he's been treated, uh, that he doesn't appreciate um, not being consulted with on arranging that fight. Uh, well, Nick or, or, or Nate, buddy, uh, you're an employee. <laughs> well, technically, he's not an employee. <laughs> he's a yeah, contract no, he's, worker. He's, he's a contracted employee. He's an, he's a contracted employee. So. Either you can do what they're asking you to do or just not, you know, not be a part of the company anymore. It's that simple. I have no problem with him walking away. I have no problem taking the fight, whatever he decides. But he can't sit there and bitch about it, man. That's kind of silly. He signed a contract. His contract's to help them make money. So that's what he needs to do. Yeah, I just want him to get those fights in and over with. And if he wants to leave, he should leave and... If he wants to stay, he needs to not agree to anything but a better contract that he could easily get anywhere else. Um, That's true too. And if he doesn't get that, yeah, let him let him get it elsewhere. Because you know, Chris and you want to say, yeah, he probably gets paid more behind the, the behind the scenes, but we don't know how much he's getting paid behind the scenes. All I know is base pay is ridiculously shit. It's, yeah, it's so bad. bad. For a fighter who's fought as long as he has, and for the fighters that I've seen that get paid more than him, that, in my opinion, shouldn't. not be, You know, I mean, I, I guess I, I shouldn't say shouldn't because I can't say who deserves what or, or what doesn't. But for a guy that's fought over almost, yeah, what, 15 times in the UFC to still be getting paid um, less than 50 Gs even uh, under another fight card with base pay is just bad. It's very bad, in my opinion. It's so bad. <laughs> there, are, you know, I mean, like guys like Gray Maynard and you know, um, there's another, another name on there, but uh, Gleason Tebow, uh, Michael Johnson. Those guys make more money than Nate Diaz. A lot more money than Nate Diaz. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, it's cool. yeah. You know. I mean, there's not too many guys that have that have you know that I can find. I, th- I literally think a- anybody that's had more than seven fights in the UFC makes more money than Nate Diaz, yeah. which is and bad. He's a bigger big draw than all those guys. Yeah, and he's a way bigger yeah. draw than a the high yeah, majority of these guys. I think it's weird, guys. though. Like, they've talked about this before. They've All they've said on it are really just what they show the numbers on all the sites or whatever aren't what is it what Nate's actually making. That's all I've heard. Yeah, but, you know, if that was your base pay – I'd bitch a lot too, but you know, I uh, he needs to to get rid of that contract. He has to finish. I believe it's either one or two more fights. I don't remember how many. I just know it's one of those two. Um, 
you know, I, I would just, you know, t uh, if I was Nate, I would just take kind of gimme's for right now and finish that contract out before you take any more big fights. Because he fought the now current UFC champion and got $26,000 for it. That's it. That's all he got. Yeah, as far as baseball. Fight. What's up? So he also missed weight for that fight, didn't he? Yeah, so he would have made 30000 if he didn't miss weight. Still not saying much from 30000 but I. Yeah, I think honestly, he's not gonna get a his contract re reworked at this point. Doesn't yeah. seem like they're gonna do it. I think he should just look to finish out the contract. Maybe I wouldn't take any fights at seventy because he could easily go on a pretty bad skid. So I mean, I would take some fights that are winnable because he he keeps wanting to fight these big names, but they're not always winnable fights. I take some winnable fights and be able to negotiate the contract a little bit better, find something he wants, a deal he wants. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. That's just my opinion. I just think it's oh, just ridiculous. And, and, you know, while I see all these people that don't, you know, want to hear him bitch anymore. I mean, anybody that was gay, like, this is like saying, like, you are an employee, you work for 10 years, that's one spot. And then somebody comes in, works there for three years, and they're getting paid, what, $15 an hour, you're only getting paid 10. Yeah, he's doing a lot. I mean, he's bringing in a lot of fans. He's obviously a draw. So, I mean, they should be paying him more. That's undoubted, but I I don't know what he could really do about it at this point. Yeah. I mean, you also got to look at his attitude, though, man. He, like, he, his unprofessionalism, he's, like, missing weight, and he's causing all kinds of other problems. He's bitching this, that, and the other. If And he's just asking, if he's asking for more money just to show up, that's not going to work. That's not even real life, man. You got to, like, do more than what you're asked of to get more money from somebody. That's the truth. That's business. So that's that's my issue with the whole thing. That's true in some aspects, but <laughs> it, it's when you're a guy who's drawing in, you're bringing fans. When you're on Fox main eventing and bringing in viewers, I mean, regardless, the guy should be getting paid more than $30,000. I mean, I don't know how much. Obviously, there are other contributing factors, but he should be making more money than that. Yeah, I don't even think that should be contend, you know, contended. The fact that he should get paid more than he's getting paid is so bad in my opinion. But yeah, know. I agree. Oh, <laughs> what else we have to talk about on this one? Uh, anything you two want to bring to the table? I did, uh, I should have set. I should have started prepping for some uh, fan questions, but I didn't. So that's my bad. No fan questions. Uh, I don't know. There's really not too much to talk about other than that. Uh, box card. UFC 186 going down this Saturday, people. Go see it. Go see it. Chris won't tell you to go see it. I will tell you to go see no, it. No, I won't. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to, I wouldn't tell you to pay for it. <laughs> so you're going to tell him to go do illegal I do acts. I on this illegal streaming of UFC fights, but I would not tell you to pay for that card. <laughs> find, some, find your local uh, watering hole. Go find your local bar. That's what I'll probably be doing. I'm going to go to Hooters. Something, I don't know. Might as well. I mean, I, I'll watch I'll watch almost any fight. I'll watch this card just because I'm a hardcore fan. I love watching the sport. I'm just a hardcore MMA fan. I'll watch the fights because, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's still fights that I'm interested in seeing, but I would never pay for this card ever, ever. I ever. Pay, I wouldn't pay $20 for this card. <laughs> I'm not even joking. I'm not joking. Would you have I'm paid for too. this past Fox, this past, yesterday's card? I'd pay for that over this. Yeah. That's not I'm not going to lie to you. I think I would too, to be honest with you. If I had to pay for one oh, or the absolutely. other. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, if I had to pay for one or the other, yeah. That's that's a no-brainer. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, this card especially, I mean, actually, I'm kind of like, obviously, we talked about ramp the Rampage situation before. But um, I have to give props. I was listening to Chael Sonnen's podcast, and um, he was saying, like, if someone says you have a contract with someone and you say you don't, that doesn't mean anything. It has to be, like, the judge decides this. You can't just say, no, I don't have a contract with you, and Bellator does. And he basically just said the UFC kind of just signed him to take him out of play. I don't know if that's entirely true, but it doesn't really add up. <laughs> Like yeah, Rampage yeah. just said, he, I mean, I'm sure their lawyers looked into it, but they must have known they couldn't win that. Like, how, I, I have, I didn't really think about this, but 
their lawyers are some of the best in the world. They obviously looked at a Rampage's contract. How did they think they were going to get him to fight for them? Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's all behind-the-scenes shit right there. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just talking about this because of the, it did lose a big name on that 186 card. There really aren't many contributing uh, drawing power on that 186 card. I mean, DJ just being a champion is a little bit of a draw. He's not fighting a draw. Bisbing has a name, but other than that, there's no one. Nice. Yeah, I agree. No, I mean, no one especially for how badly this card you, fell apart. <laughs> here's telling you how good this card is. Two of the faces on the main card on the UFC.com for 186 are just the black faces that aren't like there's <laughs> no picture. <laughs> on the main card of a pay-per-view. <laughs> there's no picture for Steve Bose and there's no picture for Shane Campbell. <laughs> And the prelims are almost as good as the main card. Damn. You want to know what Conor McGregor tweeted after Max beat uh, after Max beat Cub this year? Sure, I like to hear this. He's like, "Congrats to my kids in the McGregor division last night. Daddy is pleased." <laughs> <laughs> McGregor division. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. This fucking guy. <laughs> He's hilarious sometimes though. And then he like posted a picture with him and his hand up like he's royalty. Funny. Yeah, he's right, a, so he's a funny fuck, don't, man. Don't, yeah, I, I think that's it. Have, I guess we don't have much else to talk Jonas, about. Jonas, you have anything you want to bring to the table? Nah, I think we're good on this end. All right. Fat fans, if you want to get a hold of us on Facebook or Twitter, you can hit me up at Nick the Phantom on my Twitter handle or Chris Paliuka at Chris P A G L I U C A. And uh, so. of course, sports at Sports of Anarchy, you can hit us up on there. Um, you can get this episode of the podcast available anywhere as far as, far as like Stitcher, SoundCloud, iTunes, Twitter, Facebook. We're everywhere. We can't be denied. <laughs> We're everywhere. Yeah. Um, we, uh, this coming up, coming uh, Thursday on the 36th episode, we will have Sal Almeida, World Series of Fighting Fighter, also known as The Translator. For, Wait, uh, you didn't even tell me we had him on. I told you this. No, you didn't. I told you this like a few days ago. You All right. never told me this. All right, well then, whatever. <laughs> this is a surprise to me, guys. I did not know you were having Jose Aldo's translator on. This yes. is going to be very interesting because I remember bringing him up like a week ago <laughs> before the World Series of Fighting. I had no clue. I told you we were having him on. Dude, I, I told Jonas you. at least. I don't think you told me. Yeah, but the thing is I do the interviews. <laughs> <laughs> Jonas, did I tell you? Yeah. Yeah, I left he Chris. He did not tell me. All right. He did not tell me. <laughs> I really appreciate it. All right. I would, I'm going to have so much fun with this interview. I'm gonna <laughs> that worries about, me because I don't know what you mean by that. But all right. I'm just going to ask him a bunch of questions about being Aldo's translator. Oh, it's God. Be you ridiculing <laughs> bastard. All right. Well, I'm excited to have him on. He had a great performance at World Series of Fighting 20. Um, that means i got to watch that fight. Yes, it was a good fight. You'll, you'll no, enjoy no, I'm not, it. I'm not complaining about it. I just got to watch it. Yeah, it was a great fight. I thought it was very competitive. Um, and so, yeah, we're excited to have him on on this 36th episode of the MMA Discussion uh, Podcast. Again, you can hit us up anywhere, SoundCloud, YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Twitter, mm -hmm. Facebook. We're everywhere. So, um, and leave some reviews, guys. We got to know what you're – we got to know if you like what we're putting out. We want to hear some feedback from you guys. We're working on, again – we're having uh, Saul Almeida on, we're, apparently, which I didn't know. So we're, working on, we're working on getting these guests on. We're hoping you yes. guys are enjoying the interviews we're doing with them. And it, we want to know what you guys want to hear. Like, we're putting out the content. We're having fun doing this. But feedback would be very useful. We really appreciate you guys for listening. It means a lot to us. Jonas, any last words? Uh, everything, Chris. Yeah, we definitely need feedback. So uh, look us up with that, people. Let us know if you're feeling this. If you're not feeling this, whatever we can do to make it better, what you like about it, what you don't like about it, give us all of it. Give us the truth. Because that's what we yeah, got to do. The truth. You want to you hear, you want some video, we're going to, if you guys want video, we'll try to get it on Google Hangouts. We'll try to do some more fun things. We just need to hear what you're thinking. You can let us know on Facebook through MMA Discussion or Sports of Anarchy, Twitter to me or Nick, or even the Sports of Anarchy page there. Or you can let us know through iTunes. You can rate and review us on there. You can do it on Stitcher. You can do it on SoundCloud. Leave some comments. Anywhere, really. 
Yeah, I don't. I'm not cool with doing Google Hangout. I'm pretty ugly. I don't think it would be a good idea. We might lose some viewers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll see. We'll see how everything <laughs> goes. But whatever you guys want, just let us know so we can just keep working, get better. Cause we'll, there's always room for improvement. We'd need to get like Blaze on to enhance the female viewership. <laughs> 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 We right, appreciate okay. you guys. Have a good rest of the week and uh, look for us on Thursday. We appreciate you guys. Have a great week. Later. Later.